guys, I'm Chris, this is Mike, and we are here again with Gabby, and today we are talking about um, all about rentals and the process to go through on doing that. Right so after this. Stay tuned. Yep. <laughs> I want whales today. Well, we're going to see both. And we're going to see some sea lions as well. Loving life here in Ecuador and the positives outweigh any negatives and that my friends is called living the life you love. Okay, welcome back everyone. So Gabby's here with us again on a video about uh, renting in Ecuador. So what we care about most is cost. So how much does it really cost to rent on a monthly basis? I know there's two Average. different seasons. Yeah, mm -hmm. give us sort of a range of what would be typical for an expat mm -hmm. to, uh, to rent a house or condo in, uh, on, it's on the coast here. Probably different too if you rent long term or short term, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. That's something so important for people to know because, you know, if, you, if you're looking to come for two or three months during high season or even off season versus a year, you're going to expect to pay more per month and you're not getting gringo. Don't worry because I get that sometimes. <laughs> oh, because I'm a gringo. It's, you know, more. No, it's it's just like that across the board. If you're renting short term, then it's going to be a little more expensive. Okay, so let's cover off, you know, January. You're coming down after Christmas. You're coming down here sometime in January. You're coming from Canada January or the March. Northern, uh, Northern United States. You want some sun on the coast here, which is probably the most expensive that you would get in all of Ecuador. So sort of that January to March kind of frame. Yep. What would people like Three months during high season yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, why don't we How talk about those, those at? prices yeah. as a typical yeah. condo, for example. Yeah. Let's yeah. say you want a couple bedrooms because you're, argue, you're arguing with your better half, so you need to kick him off into the other bedroom, <laughs> so you need a couple. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> so you need a dust. <laughs> yeah, we won't go into that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, so a couple <laughs> bedrooms. So first I just want to clarify that this area is a little more expensive than a lot of other towns in Ecuador. Um, like if you if you look alone versus Cuenca, you'll see that the rent in alone is a lot more higher. Mm -hmm. um, or even like alone versus like Salinas, I think alone is a little bit more expensive. So we're kind of in the pricier range in Ecuador in general. So alone, any, anywhere from Mangarato to Ayampe, I'd say is a little bit more expensive. Um, to answer your question, I'd say for something with a few bedrooms, AC units, close to the beach, possibly a swimming pool. Um, <laughs> Up-to-date appliances. Up-to-date appliances, you know, fast-speed internet. I'd say during high season, you could expect to pay between 1500 to 2000 a wow. month for something nice. That's a lot. Eh? It something is. Nice. For something nice. Uh, something modest, maybe no AC units, but close to the beach. Um, kind of simple kitchen, you know. Two bedrooms at most, you could probably get something for a thousand a month, maybe twelve hundred a month. So kind of in that price range. So it's yeah. actually, I think, more than what people, some people yeah. may expect. Okay. So what if we go off the beach into there's a few gated communities mm -hmm. that are on the other side of the highway yeah. here. So they're fairly far from yeah. the beach, but they have some nice little bungalows and things yeah. that yeah. you could rent. How much would they kind of be roughly in, in the in same time? High, in, yeah, in during high season. yeah, during same time, you can expect maybe to find something around eight, nine hundred dollars a month, yeah. even seven if you're lucky. 
Um, it really depends on the location. And they well. have pools yeah. and all those pool gated communities that I've or, seen. Or at least, yeah. you know, yeah. gated community, some yeah. sort of like perimeter fencing. Or yeah. Now, long-term prices would obviously reduce significantly. Like you, you can you get something. Eight months, say. Or yeah. let's say you you're want to live down here full-time like the friends we just met. They're right. coming down. They're willing to sign a one-year contract. Um, so it takes into account both the low yeah. price. So let's go back to that condo that we was can take 1500 yes. or 1000 to Yes. What would that be for a one-year lease? Um, do you think? Yeah, yeah. That was, I would say, maybe eleven hundred, a thousand dollars. You can month. save a lot if you you're can willing save, to commit. Like commit your to friends, them. in fact, yeah. I rented to them, and they're coming starting during high season, but they're coming for a year, and they're going to be paying seven fifty plus utilities, and it's a three-bedroom, two-bath in a gated community. It's not, it's on the other side of the highway, so it's not close, close to the beach, but hey, it's a five minute cab ride. It's not far. Yeah. It's an awesome community. It's an awesome community. Yeah. So, I mean, they got, they got a really good price. So, you know, you gotta, there's, there's some gold, you know, rent just gotta search term. for. Exactly, because they rented yeah. long term. They're sending yeah. a one year lease. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Yes. So, how do you find a rental in, uh, in, Ecuador in Ecuador when you're living in the United States or Canada? Like, where do you start? MLS, ML, just like real estate. I, I think in Canada and the States, I think MLS may just be for real estate. I'm not positive, but in Ecuador, MLS has rental listings and um, real estate listings. Mm -hmm. So MLS is a big one. In fact, like I mentioned about real estate, most of my expat inquiries for rentals, long or short term, come through MLS. Um, MLS, uh, Facebook as well. Although Facebook for rentals, not so much. I guess it's starting to pick up a little more. I'm getting more um, rental inquiries through Facebook. Instagram is a big one for short-term rentals. I get a lot of my short-term rentals, like people looking to, for you know a weekend how, home, beach home or even like a week or two weeks or during the holidays, I get lots of my inquiries through Instagram. Cool. Yeah. And then Airbnb is kind of on the rise. I'm, I'm getting lots of people that will, I have some of my listings on Airbnb and so they'll message me kind of privately and ask if the listing is available like for a long term and if they can get a discount because obviously if you do it through Airbnb, um, it'll, it'll be more yeah. expensive. So they'll ask for a discount through Airbnb. So they're not going around Airbnb but they'll ask for like a special offer. Um, yeah, through yeah. Airbnb, and, and I think so. that's what people don't realize that yeah. they can do with Airbnb. Yes. A lot of people, Think that oh Airbnb is so expensive. Once you, I'm staying in this place for a month, like when we we're going to uh, Cuenca for two weeks, right. we thought it was high for what they wanted to charge at the right. place. So we just said, you know, do you have a discount for we two, weeks, two weeks? Two weeks, and we'll book if you do. And, and they, it's low season. And they did. Yeah. And yeah. it was like okay, well, just that, we're perfect. staying there. Because yeah. <laughs> you can go ahead and look at the calendar yes. to see how much it's it's booked exactly. for that time you want to go. And if it's yeah. hardly booked, the chances are they're going to give you a deal. If it's totally booked and you're trying to fit you in, you're probably not going to get it. Yeah. A very good yeah. Uh, deal. Just gotta ask. So one of the things that I did looking for property was just, uh, you know, we were interested in this area. I just Googled, you know, alone Ecuador real estate. Mm -hmm. And then you get a whole bunch of companies, including yours mm -hmm. and the MLS, mm -hmm. Ecuador, and three or four other yeah. ones where you can kind of look. Realtor.com is a big one. Yeah, big yeah. One. But it's good to look at all of them because some, just like in Canada in the, in the US, some people have exclusive listings right. for certain things that you only find on their particular Correct. sites. I actually have a lot of uh, rental, talking about rental, rental listings on my site that you won't find anywhere else. Yeah. So they're not on Airbnb, um, they're not listed with other agents. So yeah, you gotta, you definitely gotta look on those websites, see what there is. And so you have your own website. Yes. So we'll have to put that up on yeah. the, the thing there so people can contact Gabby. So when you're renting a park, mm -hmm. what is typically included in that rental sure. price? Is there extra costs on top of the rental price right. that people should be considering? Right. So first, talking about furnished in Ecuador, almost 98% of the properties, uh, rental properties, are fully furnished. That was my next question. So oh really? Me I'm, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> okay. So most of the properties are fully furnished. In fact, if you don't want them to be, it's like too bad. <laughs> I've had that case yeah. recently where people are like, I don't want those bunk beds, and the owner's like, I have nowhere to store them, so they're staying there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you ask to take furniture out, you might get that sort of response. 
Uh, what's included, um, it depends on the, the landlord, like if it's a long-term rental, a lot of times nothing will be included, so that means rent plus electricity, water, internet. Um, if it's short term, then it will most likely include water, internet, but not electricity. If it's over, if it's one month and over and there's AC units, you can bet that the electricity will never be included, meaning that it's rent plus electricity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I've seen recently, I've never seen it before, maybe you could shed some light down. I think it's a great idea of, of where um, the people who are renting it mm -hmm. will say, uh, and these are typically short term ones, come to think of it, of, yeah. of where they're saying, oh, we'll pay the first $100 of electricity. That is, oh, yes. Yeah, is that yeah. So it kind of covers oh, yeah. the electricity, but not for crazy people like us who want to have it on <laughs> that, too much. That right? is a, yeah. That's a thing, and I've, I've actually have had that, and we'll write it into the contract as well. Like, owner will cover what they normally pay, which is, let's just say, $60 a month. But if it goes over that, the tenant would pay the difference. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. yeah. So what about pets? People allowed to, to have pets in their rental place? I think a lot of places are becoming more pet friendly, I'm happy to say. A lot of my rentals that used to be no pets are like, okay, pets are fine. Um, you can expect to pay a, a pet deposit. So on top of the security deposit, also jumping the gun, there's a security deposit that's required. It's like a damage deposit refundable after you leave. If you go in with pets, they may ask for an additional X amount of money just, in case. Just in case your dog, you know, messes up their couch or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, pet pl places are becoming more pet friendly on the coast here. So, what's the advantages of using a real estate agent for renting? No, you don't have to. People mm -hmm. have signs up for for renting, and you yeah. can just go and and talk to them and agree on an amount. What's the advantage of using someone like yourself to do a rental? Your realtor is going to work in your best interests, and they're the faci facilitator. So they will facilitate all the communication between you and the landlord, and that's a huge help. That's a huge help, especially if you don't speak the same language. So if you're, I mean, sometimes the landlords are bilingual, and that's great, but sometimes they're not, they don't speak English. So that's when your realtor kind of comes in and, and does all the translating for you. Realtor will also work on the contract and will be neutral so that the contract has terms that are in the best interest of both landlord and tenant. I think having a realtor if you're renting is a huge help. Yeah. Because yeah, I've heard some horror stories um, yeah. on a pretty regular basis just by reading, you know, the, yeah. the uh, Facebook groups. Yeah. And typically the horror stories fall under the category of, of um, you know, not getting their, their deposit back at the end. Um, oh, that's in fact, some people will even say, oh, that money's gone. Uh -huh. They say it's a deposit, uh -huh. forget about it, you're never going to see that money again. Yeah. So how, to, what, how does that whole process work? So actually, I'm glad that you mentioned that because my agency, we hold on to the security deposit. Um, because I did not know this ahead of time. This was yes. not a set of questions. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 none of this. Because actually, like, let's be really transparent. Yeah. This is the... Yeah, she I, hasn't seen the questions. I have not seen yeah. the questions, guys. I'm serious. Um, <laughs> I love it. I really like, I'd rather do it this way. It's just so much more like authentic. Yeah. Um, I, my agency holds on to the security deposit for that reason, because I would hate for that. I've never had that situation. I've been doing this for seven and a half years. I've never, thank God, had any sort of situation with my tenants and landlords, but I would hate for that to happen. Where the landlord's like, no, they're not getting their deposit back because X, Y, and Z. It's like, well, I've got, I've got the deposit. So I have some say in this and I see it with my own eyes, what's going on. And so that's why I'm saying the realtor's gonna have your back. So what about if something breaks? I'm living in this place, mm -hmm. and it's signed a one year lease, yep. let's say, and the fridge yep. just went kaput with some electricity thing that went boop, boop, and no more fridge. Yep. We actually have a clause in the rental contract, which by the way, I have, I always use rental contracts and I use English and Spanish. Um, and there's a special clause in the rental contract that actually states that if something does break during like, you know, the time that the tenant is renting, then they have um, uh, like X amount of time. Uh, it could be like, I think, it's, I think it's seven days to put in writing to the landlord that this is broken, like to report what's right. broken. And then obviously if it's, you know, if it's something like the fridge or if it's a maintenance thing, then the landlord will have to, have to replace it for them or fix it. Great. What about renter's insurance? Does that even exist in Ecuador? So, you know, there might be renter's insurance in Ecuador, I have to say, but I've never actually come across renter's insurance, and I've never had any renters purchase renter's insurance. 
but that's kind of a question mark for me. I, I don't believe Well, it kind of makes sense if you were saying before most, most rentals come furnished. Yes. So the person renting it, what are you going to insure, right? Correct. There's Correct. Not really much there. Yeah. Okay. What about uh, tips for negotiating a lease? What suggestions would you give people? Because everything is Ecuador, everything is negotiable. <laughs> when they say eight hundred and fifty yeah. a month, they don't really mean eight hundred and fifty yeah. a yeah, month. Yeah, yeah. I have I have a couple good ones. I have two really good tips. One is actually just negotiating it. It's like you would purchase property, just make an offer, see if that works. If it doesn't work, then what you can do is you can offer to pay upfront the entire. Yeah. Time, whether it's three months, six months, a year, yep. offer to pay up front in one in one lump sum. So, yeah. So, like for example, if you've got a place for six months and they're asking a thousand, and you want to get it for eight hundred, offer to pay eight hundred times six, pay it all up front. But if you're going to do that, you better have one of those contracts that you're talking yes. about as to yes, you know, making yeah. sure everything's safe and taken care of. Absolutely, always have a contract. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do those contracts need to go to a notary to They should be notarized. Legit? They should be notarized. However, just having, like, if, God forbid, you need it, and I've never had this situation happen, but if you've ever needed to use it in court for whatever reason, having um, the signature is, uh, is legal vi valid validity, sorry, excuse me, um, and you can actually then notarize it afterwards. But the smartest thing to do would be to have it notarized um, when you're signing it from the get-go. And in fact, the seller um, a lot of times may request to have it notarized because tenants here have more rights than landlords. Maybe in Canada it's the same, I'm not sure, but here it's a little more riskier. So actually the, the, the landlords may want that notarized more than the tenant. And in that case, then this, the landlord would have to have it notarized and pay for the, for the notarization. Perfect. So one last question we have for you. Okay. <laughs> Common rental scams. Ooh. How do you avoid them? Now what should people be aware of? Yeah, so like I said before, I thank God I've never had any, any bad experiences, so I can't speak from experience, thank goodness. But something that, some things I've heard um, is, has happened is when you're looking online at rental properties, um, for example, Airbnb, let's just use that as an example like we mentioned before. Um, the scammers will, will um, create based on properties they've seen, like fake listings and then want to do like a direct booking with the tenant mm -hmm. off the platform. That, that's, I, that's, that's, a sure some, sign. that's a sure that's, sign. That's a sure that's, sign. That's a sure sign. Like what they'll do is they'll find, like let's say a scammer will see my listing, Intelus listing, and they'll just download the images and create a fake listing somewhere else. And that tenant will be unlucky enough to find that fake listing and contact that person and not Intelus. Do all the business yeah. with them, and right. uh -huh. yeah. you you get what I'm going yeah. at. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. happened here. Um, it's happened to clients of mine, not with me, not with my listings, but it's happened to people I know. So gotta be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is another good reason why you should deal with uh, exactly. And if you see a listing online, um, sometimes pictures, you know, don't suffice. Like sometimes pictures just yeah. don't aren't really aren't aren't true to the property, or they're older pictures. And so it's always a good idea, especially if you're coming for like more than a few months, is to have your realtor do like a walkthrough video. Yeah. If you're renting before seeing the property, because I'll have a lot of clients that will rent and put down a deposit before actually seeing the property in person. Uh -huh. So if you're doing that, then have your realtor do a video for you just yeah. to make sure that the video everything too. looks nice. The yeah. the video too is you get to hear the noise factor if there is exactly. any around, exactly. which some people don't really realize yeah. that if there's four dogs, we have two, but if there's <laughs> yeah. four dogs and your neighbors, uh, there may be some issues with a rooster on the other neighbor, and, <laughs> or it could be completely quiet. Yeah. You, know, you don't if, know. If you're sensitive to noise, and I know a lot of people are, I can be sometimes, actually being so close to the beach sometimes isn't the best. Like I it's recently true. had a renter who, beautiful property, great price, it's actually amazing price, like it was 600 a month I think she was getting for a brand new house overlooking the ocean, beautiful. Um, it was a one bedroom, it was small, but she, the ocean noise drove her crazy. Like she couldn't, so we had to break contract, she lost her deposit, because that's one thing is that if you, you break contract. You mean the noise of the ocean waves, yes, right? Yeah. Yes, the noise of the ocean. Yeah. Um, we had to break the contract and, and a lot of times in fact, almost all the time, at least with my company, if you break the contract, you will lose your security deposit. 
um, she was like, I don't care. Uh, I don't want to live here anymore. But it, because the noise drove her kind of crazy. Well, it's funny that you mentioned so, that. You tell that story. When we um, were looking at a place to rent or buy here, um, one of the places we did stay was in an Ayan Bay, yeah. and it was right on the beach. Uh -huh. And I'm glad that we did a beachfront yeah. place because I said, God, it's actually like really noisy. noisy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it was like having a noisemaker yeah. turn yeah. on full volume as those waves came in, and we couldn't handle it. it was so like, we decided, no, we do not want to live on the beachfront. ocean. Yeah. We want to live with viewing yeah. the ocean, but away a little bit. So. But I will say one kind of last thing about the noise is that if you are very sensitive to noise, then Olon, Ayampe, those towns may not be the place for you. Because Montanita. Montanita, <laughs> definitely not Montanita. Yeah, not Montanita. Definitely not Montanita. Because there's going to be noise. Yep. There is going to be noise at some point. There's going to be a Sweet 15 party happening on the corner or they're going to be celebrating, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of, lot of celebrations of this. There's here. a lot of celebrations here. There's a lot of celebrations <laughs> Which we here. love. It's so, great. So, yeah. So, it's I mean, a holiday once a week. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. But, yeah. I love it. I really do. Yeah. But just, you know, kind of take, or you'll have a neighbor that, you know, likes to party every every weekend. I mean, it's just, like, like that. Could, it could be like that any place in the yeah. world, really. Yeah. But if you're super sensitive to noise and just stay away from those main towns, like go to Korea or San Jose, San Jose is kind of, more quieter. Yeah, quiet <laughs> I think here. that's why we're here. Yeah. 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 So, last question yeah. overall. When we're back from Cuenca, should we look at some more houses? Yes. <laughs> yes, I think because so. Because I've seen a few I, I want to so. look at just for personal interest. Look, I'm not saying this because I'm trying to see. I'm not saying this because I'm trying to sell. I'm not saying this because I'm trying to sell properties through your channel. Obviously, that would be great because that's what I do. But I have some beautiful listings that, like, brand new beautiful listings. I think you guys have maybe seen that I want to show just because I like showing beautiful properties yeah. to people. Like, yeah. it just comes down to that. So if you guys want to do and a the, video. And the majority of the people who watch our channel yeah. um, are very interested in that. They're like 60, 65% are, uh, are from the United States and, and they haven't moved here yet mm -hmm. and they're thinking about it. So real estate, that's the biggest cost, whether you're renting yeah. or whether you're buying, that's your biggest uh, cost that you're gonna have because Absolutely. everything else is pretty cheap here. And uh, that's what they're interested in. And if you go, you know, not just to our channel, but all the different YouTubers, mm -hmm. um, their real estate videos always do really, really well um, that they have. And people just eat them up. It's like, oh, how much does this you cost? How much know. does that cost? How much uh, yeah. expectations? How much is it going to cost me to Absolutely. live somewhere, right? I have this thing where, and maybe this has to do with, because I'm a realtor, but I have this thing where I travel. I like to look at listings. Even though I know I'm never going to buy a place in like Banos, for example where I went recently. Yeah. Like, I just like to look what's on the market. Yeah. 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 I won't waste the realtor's time by seeing what's out there just to see, but I like to just look, you know, it's like window shopping, so yes. And there's a few gems out there in the area right now. Um, I think it's because it's the off season, mm -hmm. and um, you combine that with some of the bad press Ecuador has, uh, has, has gotten, and folks, it really isn't that bad. Um, and you combine that together, and with some motivated sellers, and I've seen some deals out there, so I'd love mm -hmm. to uh, love to sort of show people that We'd and love to see uh, that, so. we'll have someone take advantage of it. Well, we and, that. and by the way, we don't get paid anything for any of this stuff, so it's all good. Awesome. Okay. Can't wait. Thanks so much, uh, Gabby, and... Uh, Let's wrap this up. Let's wrap it up. Remember, live the life you love. <laughs>